Hi, my name's Jackson Bird, and today we're doing something a little bit different. The difference is not just that we are in a new vlogging space, that's happening because these boxes are rudely taking up the space where I usually put my tripod. No, I thought today I would try an unedited video, starting after this little intro bit. I always spend a lot of time scripting and editing my videos because I'm scared to say the wrong thing, especially talking about LGBTQIA plus topics. There are just a lot of places where you can accidentally say the wrong thing. But I'm also trying to push myself to not be so rigid in my videos, so I thought I would try this, so I asked a bunch of you on my Twitter and my Instagram what topics I should talk about, and a lot of you really wanted me to spill some tea here. A lot of people were re requesting, like, drama and controversy in the LGBTQ plus community. And a lot of people also wanted me to talk about bisexual things, representation and erasure and biphobia within the LGBT community. So I thought I could meld those things together a little bit. And I'm gonna have three minutes and just three minutes to talk about biphobia and erasure and visibility within and without the LGBTQ community. Because, <laughs> you know, that only needs three minutes of discussion. At the end of this, you might be thinking, wow, yeah, he should really keep scripting his videos. Which, like, scripting is not going away. Or, if you liked it, you might consider following me on Instagram stories and you now, where I occasionally will talk without a script, which I'm clearly very good at. Wow, this video is gonna be great. All right. Three minutes starts now. Okay, so why does bi-visibility matter? Bi-visibility bi bi <laughs> matters because bi people exist. The problem is a lot of people think that bi people don't exist. There are a lot of gay people out there who think that it is a phase, that is a stepping stone to your true gay identity. The problem is that for a lot of people it is. For a lot of people, coming out as bi is a stepping stone or a phase. And so then those people or people who have known those people are like, well, it was true for me, so all other bi people out there just haven't figured it out completely yet. But that's not true. Like, bisexuality can be a phase and a stepping stone for some people and be a completely valid identity for others. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this for the first time, I'm bi, so maybe I'm biased here. Ha, <laughs> ha, see, when I edit, I can cut out my bad jokes. The other reason that this myth persists is because the lack of bisexual representation in the media. So often, if we even get characters who are maybe bi or pan or whatever, they just are labeled as the whatever in the media, you know? We never get a character, or well, a little bit more so nowadays, but traditionally we'd never get a character being like, yes, I am bisexual. We just get the, I don't really believe in labels, which is also a valid sexuality, but because that's all we ever get and we don't get people like outright saying I am bisexual, it feels like we are misrepresented and it's making some of the persistent myths happen of like bi people are just like hypersexual and greedy and they just want to have sex with all the people all the time, which is so not true because it's also ignoring people who are just biromantic but asexual. Um, also, I feel like there's a thing happening right now where like Bisexuality, I mean, still has a lot of work to do, obviously, um, but, like, where bisexuality is being accepted, those same people uh, are now saying the same things about non-binary genders. I see that happening a lot. Like, there are a lot of people being like, yeah, non-binary genders is just a phase. Yeah, non-binary gender is just like a stepping stone to being fully trans, whatever that's supposed to mean. Um, and so, how much longer do I have to keep talking? Oh good, only a minute. <laughs> um, uh, so, I mean, not only does this bad representation for bi people, like, at large, of so many people out there maybe just staying fully closeted because they think they have to choose one. This was totally true for me. I thought bisexuality wasn't real, I had to choose one, and I guess I liked boys more, so I was, uh, thought I was a cis straight girl. My life has been confusing. Um, but also within the community, it is so freaking unfortunate that we, like, you, you see an LGBTQ plus space, you assume it's gonna be a safe space, and then you go in there and there are people like, bisexuality is not real. What does the T stand for again? And that is what you so often encounter within the community. But if we had better bisexual visibility in the media with fictional characters and celebrities standing up and openly saying, I am bisexual, it would kind of, oh, thank God. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is the clock. That was three minutes. Um, this was an interesting experiment. I feel like I just ranted about stuff. Maybe some of it was helpful. Um, I think for the most part I'm gonna continue scripting videos, but it was kind of fun, um, to do this as 
an exercise and maybe I'll get better at it if I continue doing it. I did also really appreciate seeing how many of you wanted to hear me talk about bisexuality because I feel like I don't talk about it enough. I made a video called why I don't talk about being bisexual. Um, so maybe I will continue doing that. Maybe I'll make a better version of this video scripted and researched and edited. But if you did like this video, please leave a comment and a like and share it with your friends. And please do subscribe if you are not subscribed already. Be sure to check out my podcast, Transmission, on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, like wherever you get your podcasts except Spotify. I gotta get it on Spotify. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.